Welcome to Politics for People Who Hate Politics, Episode 7, our special America-themed show, even though the 4th of July is tomorrow. Woo indeed, Joe. Woo indeed. We have literally two guests who don't understand how Google works, so we're going to make fun of them until they arrive, if they ever arrive late. Um, but we figured we wouldn't wait around forever, because America does not have forever. Um, all right, so today we have, for now, we might have other people wandering in, we have Joe, we have Michelle, we're lacking Corey, sadly, and again we have uh, David Lowenthal, who uh, blogs for The Forgotten Beard, and we hung out one time and it was great, and then, oh wait, we did hang out one more time after that, so <laughs> yeah. it wasn't never again, but we have trouble with making that happen. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have some stuff to talk about that's America-themed, um, and let's start right oh. off with the part where we're all deeply ashamed of our fellow Americans, and that, uh, to which I refer, of course, to the Californians who like to scream at buses full of immigrant families and children um, and tell them to go home, and chant USA at them, which... I'm happy that you know the name of the country you're in and you know where a flag store is, but that actually isn't an argument. So, um, immigration. Would, are you guys grossed out as I am by uh, these protesters? Well, yeah. sometimes, I, sometimes I need a good reminder of why it's so fun pointing out the absurdity of extreme nationalism. So this is a good reminder of that, just crazy people yelling at kids. Yeah, I mean, it is a nice microcosm of it, isn't it? Joe? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not quite as pro-immigrant as you are, apparently, but this is obviously crossing the line. Um, I mean, you, what, are, what are they supposed to do? You know, you send them back. They don't know where they came from. Are they going to drive around the whole country looking for their parents? Yeah. And they, they're in. I mean, I guess there's nothing you can really do about it at this point, but uh, if people want to protest, it just makes them look stupid. It does make them look stupid, and, like, the whole throw, sort of, I mean, I know they literally throw them, they blocked the buses. And for that level of commitment to protesting, like, these people are not throwing themselves in front of the DEA. They're not throwing themselves in front of tanks somewhere. Like, there's something truly truly repellent to me about them going to that much trouble for keep the poor people away. It just pisses me off so deeply. And I, I hate protesters in general. You do, I, don't you? Yeah. I do. I really do. <laughs> I hate all of them. But I don't Joe, even care what the cause is because they're almost always... If you get that many people, it's almost always not like 90% of them are just stupid and there for the wrong reasons and almost... Every protest I can think of. You know, I mean, not not to judge books by their covers, but you can just tell from looking at the people in the video, like the protesters and by what they're wearing, that like they think they're the kind of people who think Chipotle is like exotic. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I don't. They're terrible. Yeah. yeah, they're so. I mean, the woman with the misspelled sign. I mean, Jesus, yeah. like, how easy are you making it? Like, I, I almost wonder if she was a liberal plant because it was, or any kind of pro-immigrant plant because it was too easy with her. Oh, uh, terrible. Yeah, I think that, that mayor of that town is a real piece of work, too. Because he was like, well, because they had signs like, you know, stop illegal immigration and illegals out. But then I read that he did an interview where he's like, showing a bunch of angry people isn't a true reflection of Marietta. I'm like, well, it's the only reflection that we're pretty much going off of, but it's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, there they were, uh, being a bunch of angry people. Yeah. But then I got to thinking about it. It's like Americans are always, they're always stoked about the last wave of immigration. Like, yeah. they're never stoked about the current wave. They're always like, you know, oh, you know, in the 19th century, look, you know, my grandfather came over from Italy or from, you know, Greece or the Ukraine, but whenever it's like this generation, they're always like, hell no. That's right, yeah. It's true. And they always forget. There's no memory of, of like, the, the U.S. didn't collapse last time, and once upon a time there were not that many restrictions on this stuff. There's no memory of that. 
The U.S. team is particularly... Well, again, I mean, we discussed this before. It's not just the U.S., but people... Like, the terror of immigrants is such an old, boring, frustrating, and depressing story. Um, and there it is again. And some people I like otherwise still fall into this, and it's it's very strange to me. Uh, I don't know. A lot of it, like, I think we discussed last podcast, goes back to welfare and voting and demographics and stuff like that. They don't want these people messing up. I mean, everyone thinks, I don't know. I don't know what exactly they think is so, like, perfect about right now. Like, this is the ultimate. In- we, got, we got the mix just right. right. The melting pot like, is perfect. Do not fucking add anything Bobby else. Bobby Flay perfecting <laughs> his barbecue recipe, and all these Mexicans want to come in and add hot sauce. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's, that's, a, no, that, that's a solid um, allegory. Or, I don't when know. I add beans and rice, you can't <laughs> mix Mexican and continental. Ah, you're right. Keep the metaphors of food coming. It's very good. <laughs> well, there's, uh. there's an analogy that I keep like thinking up uh, thinking of that Grover Dorquist came up with, and it's actually pretty poignant. He's like he compares it to like speed limits, and he was like, you know, it it like people who complain about like illegal immigration now keep saying enforce the law would be like people who you know when we have an obscenely low speed limit that everyone's breaking, they'd be the people who say, well, we need to enforce the law now, and then when everyone's going, you know, like in 25 miles an hour down the beltway, then we can increase it. Like, it's a stupid law. That's why people are breaking it, and so it needs to be changed. Absolutely. I think the most basic, like, I, I am not, I mean, I'm a little sympathetic to to cost and welfare concerns because I don't, you know, I'm not really, I don't, I, I wouldn't, you know, if I were queen of the, the U.S., I wouldn't cut welfare first, certainly, but at the same time, I'm perfectly fine saying people, you know, should come here to work, and mostly they do, and a lot of them end up paying taxes anyway. Um, if people would approach it from that angle, I say we can talk. If they approach it from the screaming at buses angle, or even the moral outrage drudge headline, the hordes are coming, like, then I don't, I don't care to engage because I don't think you're doing it in a reasonable way. I don't know. Yeah, and people are allowed to have, you know, obviously different opinions on the matter. It's, you know, it's not a black and white issue, but everything that seems to be, you know, put forward as far as like keeping people out, I mean, it's just creating a common enemy. And I don't see anything being suggested that wouldn't just erupt into violent nationalism. You know, that's that's the point I wish people would, you know, understand. It's like, yeah, you're allowed to not want them here, but do you understand that what you're proposing is like the worst thing ever. I mean, I gotta say, what I was arguing with Justin Romando from Anti-War last night, and he loves to argue, and um, I, 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 you know, I, I, don't, I can't bash him too much, and I like him in spite of him, I think, being incorrect on some things, but he was talking about a perfectly sealed border, and he was talking about troops on that border, which every good libertarian should instinctively think, whoa, that sounds like a bad idea. Even regardless, even for purely selfish American reasons, like, that just seems like a, there are some bad suggestions being made. And, um, the you know, the border security stuff already harms Americans. They already get subjected to searches, you know, um, up to 100 miles within the border. It's, 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 it's bizarre. But uh, more, more to the point, though, um, some, you know, some of the other general immigration critiques are things like that they're going to, they're going to mess up, the, the it, like Joe was saying, with, with the perfect balance of the soup. They're going to mess things up and stuff. And I guess I want to bring that around to, uh, I mean, to libertarians slash an- anarcho-capitalists, minarchist Joe, like, um, like, what the hell is America to us anyway? Which is absurdly broad. But, like, is there is there anything to this idea that America is this concrete thing that could potentially be ruined by X, Y, or Z. Like, secession, for example? I'm all for secession. Just throw that out there. I think America has run its course. We can have, you know, three or four Americas. Why not? I mean, at this point, what is, you know, America is just a concept. It's an idea. Yeah. 
it more than really any other country is a constant evolution of new ideas and new immigrants and you know they, it was built on I guess a, the Constitution but I mean it's not it's not what it once was it's you know it basically over the last 200 years you know it's, it's the melting pot of the world so you know I don't know America's just a bunch of idiots <laughs> That was riveting, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> so you're saying the Constitution is a living document, Joe. That's what you're saying, isn't it? No. <laughs> Not what I meant. <laughs> um, well, okay, so that's what it comes down to. Like, some of my favorite libertarians, um, they don't have any sort of even sentimental feelings towards the Constitution at this point. People like Sheldon Richmond. And I still have this idea when putting on my small government hat that I mean, it could have been worse, you know, we could have had some, and it would be worse if we tried to rewrite a constitution today, because one assumes you would get a couple thousand page positive liberties nightmare of a document, like something European. Um, how do we fill out the constitution? Even if we're more radical than, um, than what's in those, uh, those slim pages, what do we think? I don't know. My view on it has always been like, yeah, it sucks in a lot of ways, but it's what we have, and so, and there are a lot of facets to it where you can, I mean, if you can get a big enough coalition together, you can really push them. So, it's like, my theory has always been to just push the, the pro-liberty aspects in it just as far as you can, mm -hmm. see where that gets you, because you always start out from the point of where you are, not where you want to be, so, you know, I hate... I always hate to quote Don Rumsfeld, but... Please, you, war, you <laughs> hate that. Yes. Yeah. But you go to war with the army you have, and the Constitution is what you have. Mm-hmm. They're not. So just, I mean, you can use it to try to preserve or, or, or claim back more freedom from yeah. people? If it to works, say, it works? To just say, like, Napolitano, like, uh, Andrew Napolitano says that the Second Amendment allows you to buy literally any gun you want and any weapon you want. Yeah. Just push that. Or free speech lets you, you know, say pretty much whatever you want. And then there's innumerable negative rights in the in the Ninth Amendment. Yeah, I was just arguing with a constitutional like expert of in that he's an attorney and I guess that was his, his field of focus. And he was trying to tell me the Ninth Amendment is totally meaningless. And I was like, No, you can get so much negative, delicious, juicy, prime out of their negative liberties from the Ninth Amendment, and nobody ever seems to notice it. Um, I mean, the thing about the Constitution is, you say, I mean, you in theory, yes, it could be better, but in practice, I don't think, I mean, could it re in reality be better than it is? Has there ever been a document governing a nation that's no. been better than it is? No. I mean, it's not even close. It's so far above and beyond everything else that's ever, you know, been the center of governance of a country. I mean, it's it's good to say that, yes, it could be better, and yes, we should work to make America better, but, I mean, it's a pretty good starting point, especially in comparison with the rest of human history. Yeah, I mean, it's low standards, but that's not untrue. I suppose. But at the same time, I've often I've often thought that America has this nice idea about itself and being free, and that's a substitute for actually making sure that you're still free. Like if you just tell yourself you're free, then you might not notice how unfree you become. And I think there's a lot of that. So arguably there's a danger in like the nice myth of American freedom because people believe it without knowing what it should mean in practice and without realizing that in front of them is not that. But of course in practice it's never been that way in the history of the world. That's also true, in spite of the uh, 18th century starry-eyed people. I mean, it's, it's fine to look at things with, you know, stars in your eyes about what freedom and liberty could be, but then, you know, you have to realize that in the context of human history that things just haven't been that way and you know that's what libertarians are here for to push it in that direction I think. Right, yeah. 
Um, I feel like at one point Joe was saying something that, that really it needed a particular Lysander Spooner quote that I I can't I can't do it offhand about Michelle, do you remember about the Constitution? It either allowed, you know, the current state of tyranny circa eighteen thirty, so that's kind of funny. Or it did nothing to prevent it, so either way it's to hell with that document. That's a paraphrase of it. Yeah, I don't remember the quote. Um, David said Donald Rumsfeld, and he just left. Um, <laughs> That's so what I, happens when you so say I his name had, two yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. I just had known unknowns in my head the entire I heard nothing that Joe said. So. <laughs> Outstanding. Looking. We're having a, a rocky time. Oh, there he is. Good. There he, he is. Knows how to, he knows how to use damn Google that help, like what? some people who aren't here. That um, guy put it out. We booted uh, you. Yeah. Stay here, David. Don't you go. weren't American enough. Yeah. <laughs> but why am I still here then? All right. Well, here's a, here's another question. Actual. I mean, Fourth of July is coming up, right? Patriotism in any sense, even the sort of bullshit dissent is patriotic, and I was like, is there anything about? patriotism that works for you guys? Is it just a terrible concept that should be kicked to the curb? Or well, is the fact that America tried a little harder for freedom worth some kind of recognition? What do we think? I think I think patriotism separated from politics is good. Like patriotism like towards, you know, yourself and your family and you know, your property and your community. But is that patriotism, David? I mean, isn't that, doesn't that make the word meaningless? No, I don't think, because I think that's, like, to me, that those are the things that should be celebrated, but it's when that gets identified with the state and the state's ambitions, I think that's where it goes awry. Yeah. But I think we all have the inclination, and, you know, it's, it's really seamless nowadays because people, you know, they're constantly saying, like, even libertarians, and it kind of pissed me off, when they're arguing against war is saying, well, we did this to them, or we did this to the Iraqis, or, we, like, I didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> Lord, this is not our day for technical stuff. NSA got them. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, but for dude, a while. Oh, sorry. sorry. Well, I was just to say, like, that's, that's one of the most frustrating things, what David was talking about, the we. Like, I catch myself saying, we did this, we did right, that, and right, it, me too. it aggravates me. I try to catch myself on that. I, I mean, I used to just, when I was, like, a teenager, I stopped saying that completely because it is a garbage and it is actually a dangerous sort of turn of phrase in, in, in what it represents. But I've started, I don't know, I, I, I've fallen back into the habit of saying that again, which well, is bad. I, I think it goes back to, well, I think it's inclined with, like, the notion of how sports teams, you know, we operate as the, the we, you know, it's... Us, yeah. the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, we won the Super Bowl, we won the Stanley Cup, and with patriotism, it's kind of like, you know, when America wins a war, it's like, yeah, we won, you know, we beat the other side, and I think so that's... So, it's like evil sports. It's right. like evil well, sports. Evil sports, sports, sports yeah. actually. It's pretty much just sports, but, and that's kind of where patriotism goes wrong, I think, is this, the notion of we... And, you know, it, it is entwined with we the people, and it kind of goes back to the Constitution, and that's probably one of the, the big negatives with it. But, you know, it's it, the concept of we is, I think, a, a bad one to get into. Well, I mean, is there anything good about that, though? Like, if you feel, I mean, I don't know how often people actually feel connected to, like, their neighborhood anymore. I don't think white people of our type, no offense, Michelle, because you're not as white as the rest of us. I'm making assumptions here. Um, the, the, don't tend to feel the same conne like, connection to neighborhoods and stuff. Um, but, you know, if you did, that there's, there's not a very good chance that that can lead to some sort of governmental tyranny. But then even that is possible. Even, even a block or a neighborhood. Certainly a city, you know, it can start to get unpleasant if you start talking about, you know, your mayor did this and we did that. And it's... It can get it can get bad at a relatively small level of government um, to feel the the we at all. So I, I mean I don't I don't know if there's anything good there. It's collective. It's socialism. 
Yeah. We leads to socialism. Well, why do conservatives love it then? I mean, why is that their favorite thing? They didn't always. They didn't they? Know. Well, like definitely like post Reagan conservatives, but you know, even if you read like you know Burke and Kirk of those types who had their flaws, but they were also really skeptical about intervention. Like even Russell Kirk, like was like I think he resisted the draft mm -hmm. World War Two, or he. He wrote some like scathing letter about how, like, the draft was kind of slavery. Yeah, we need a couple more of that kind of conservative. That'd be nice. The Rand I mean, Pauls. I mean, but of course, li liberals are the same type. They just have their their their, their god awful uh, social contract, or or my personal favorite. Well, uh, well, no, the. Mad Al. I mean, government's the name for things we choose to do together. That's that's the perfect summation. Oh, it totally is. It's weed, you know, we blockaded Cuba. So. I, I, I get up every morning to blockade Cuba. <laughs> yeah. First thing on my docket. <laughs> that's right. Cuba. I mean, and, like... Go ahead. Uh, um, all right, well, so, so explicitly... Religious... <laughs> All right. Um, specifically, the Fourth of July. Um, do you guys do anything relevant to the day? I mean, do you think about Hell choose, no. your, <laughs> choose your favorite founding father? I believe mine was John Jay because he actually repeatedly tried to end slavery in New York State, so that was pretty solid, actually. And I'm also Benjamin Washington. Franklin because he I'm had the decency to not be president. Washington. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was a jerk, but he, he could have been king, and he said no. That's, that's yeah, but Ben Franklin didn't even bother to, to ride a run, run anyone's life. Ben he Franklin was with the better. whores. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was just hanging out with all the ladies and inventing bifocals and what have you. How can that's you? True. He's probably the best. <laughs> How can you beat Ben Franklin? Come on. I'm just a fan of the July Fourth aesthetic. Like, I like red, white, and blue. And like I don't know, baking things that have those colors and looking. So you don't you feel like, okay with you don't feel like like just paralyzingly principled and I can't the, the cake is red, white, and blue and I can't uh, like it doesn't bother you none of it. No, it is it is bad though. <laughs> I, I don't I I'm like self aware about it because um, I don't want to feed into. I don't know how to put this. Like, back to the patriotism thing. Um, I think like the conservative brand of patriotism was at one point, I guess, post 9/11, like the worst thing um, in existence. But that became so caricatured, um, and like now it's the the I guess the liberal brand of patriotism that I fear the most. Um, mm -hmm. This like undying, like yeah. But because, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. Like, it used to, conservative bashing used to be fun, but it's no longer amusing outside of, like, election cycles. Um, and then liberal bashing of conservatives is, like, no longer creative at all, um, when, in fact, like, the liberal brand of patriotism should be, like, the one, I don't know, <laughs> being ridiculed. Um, so when I, like, partake in these kind of patriotic, um, like, self-aware, ironic things, I feel like I'm feeding into, like, the uncreative conservative bashing of that patriotism. That's, like, a long-winded explanation, but, yeah. Well, no, there's, that makes sense, and also the general impulse to mock the people in power who've suddenly forgotten how funny and frightening the, uh, the leaders were a couple of years ago. I mean, that's that's just a libertarian -y impulse to just, you know, mock who uh, whoever needs mocking most of the time. And yeah, yeah we had we had the era of Bush, of oh, dopey Bush and evil Cheney, and like now we have uh, pompous Obama and I mean dopey Biden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> you go back to like. Um, is back to kind of the liberal patriotism part. Like, what was what was the last big criticism of George Bush during all that? It wasn't necessarily that he took us to war. It was that 
you know, he asked us to go shopping. You know, he didn't ask anything of us. He couldn't pronounce yeah. things. He which didn't. Is yeah, the no, worst they, thing in the world. They were complaining that he didn't militarize society enough. They wanted, they wanted like the World War II FDR, like, you know, we're in this, you know, and and because that's what they, that's that's like the liberal version, because they want kind of all of society going towards one kind of collectivist goal. Like, you know, when they see like the newsreels of people working on tanks and planes and everything, it's like they're, I think they're really nostalgic for that. Well, that's the David Brooks and Friedman and other people, you know, who always come up with this like they're the very first, we don't have a national goal anymore and our young people are lost and so we should, you know, enslave them for a couple of years to make them feel like they have more of a purpose. I mean, that is, that's, I would consider that, I mean, I, I think the FDR nostalgia, the nauseating stuff is, is that is a thing, but there's also the supposed like middle ground, which is always the people who are sort of awful on all issues. Yeah, and that is the Brooksian uh, Friedmanite, just you know. Yeah, uh, basically oh, saying horrible things in like catchphrases. Yeah. Basically, Thomas Friedman. Indeed, indeed. When I um, when I think yeah. of July Fourth. Okay. I do not think of the founding fathers. I do okay. not think of government. I mean, does, who really actually is, like, out there stumping for America on July 4th? <laughs> Nobody cares. People just want to go to barbecues and drink a lot of beer and watch some fireworks. I mean, people aren't, like, going into their libraries and breaking out their constitutions and their Bill of Rights and their Federalist Papers and, you know, boning up on their... <laughs> maybe they should, Joe. Maybe, maybe that's where we went maybe wrong. Maybe they should. If Glenn Beck and them had their way, they would. But I mean, mm -hmm. at least I, I, I will not Wilson. think about when I, you know, when I jokingly say USA and America rules and all this other stuff. You know, it has nothing to do with government or constitution. It has to do with grilling and beer and <laughs> you know, the the freedom, the individual. That's what my July Fourth is about. Yeah. That's it's 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 about you know about me. Who you care about yeah himself and having fun and it's not about going to listen to you know Ted Cruz or you know Harry Reid give a speech on the National Ball it's like fuck that yeah yeah I mean there's still the subtext of America taking it back which there's many an anarchist who who would just be like fuck that and I have a f fondness for the I have a soft spot for the, the the pretend America, the one that um, liberals are so grossed out by, that never was fully individualistic. But there, I mean, even I don't know, like all so things that make me feel fondness for America. One of which is geographically, it's awesome. I mean, things within the border of the country known as America, like there is land that is wonderful. There are cities that are wonderful. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of nasty history that I wish wasn't there. Hypocrisy and intervention and oops, slavery, you know, problems like that. Sure. But, I don't know, like 19th century individuals, uh, Henry David Thoreau and Lysander Spooner make me like America because they were such a product of America. And, yeah, I mean, I don't, the 4th of July in particular, I, you know, I may eat some delicious grilled item. Um, I will hear something explode probably far away because I don't bother to make things explode on my own. And, I mean, I suppose I do think about, I mean, we're having this podcast right now, so I do think about this, but at the end of the day, yeah, the, the it once again comes down to the, uh, the Jeffrey Tucker, Radley Balco, other politics haters answer of you ignore the politics, you live, damn it. <laughs> I'm uh I think uh I think it was Doug Casey who has a good kind of idea about that. He he separates kind of like America, like the ideal from like the United States. Like America is, you know, is the place we all want it to be. It's a place of liberty, you know, freedom, you know, free markets, free trade, you know, just freedom all around, but we've become like the United States, which is just you know, statism and 
leveling and you know banality and everything or yeah and I come to think of it I just feel like if I feel ashamed you know because those people in California were yelling at immigrants or you know somebody is going back to some Middle Eastern country to bomb something it's almost uh, the the ultimate not collectivism is to pick and choose what you like about it and not feel as long as you didn't vote for any of it or support any of it then you really didn't do it at the end of the day and the idea that we we invaded Iraq no I was having a tonsillectomy and I was 16 you know I definitely don't remember uh, uh, somebody may have propped me up a uh, weekend at Bernie's style but I don't you signed the declaration Lacey we know it was you <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, just I mean picking the stuff you like, that is that is the individualistic answer at the end of the day, I think. I hope. So nothing was resolved. But that's okay. This is a learning process. It's a living constitute just kidding. Um our final thing, which is gonna lead into that, is um the things that we like better than politics, but are also America themed. Um I don't know if you guys have ever watched a bit of Fry and Lori, the uh, the um, sketch show from back in the day with Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry. One of my there are two great ones where they make fun of America. Um, one where they just talk like John Wayne and they're like in the military and they just say the word ass all the time, which is really funny. Because um, British people doing American accents is usually hilarious. But another one is simply Hugh Laurie playing the piano and he's just singing America over and over again and over and over again. And finally he starts singing the states, the states, the states, and then eventually Stephen Fry just punches him. But, you know, that's a British person's impression of what our pop culture is. Like, we can't stop serenading America in a way that Britain, you know, really doesn't do that, I think. Um, so what kind of America e pop culture do you guys enjoy? Like what's what what hath America granted you that is not Harry Reid and Ted Cruz and other people like that and slavery? Michael Hot Bay. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> like Michael Bay, that was brash and <laughs> Do you see Michael Bay? Yeah. Why? I'm talking about Con Air, The Rock. Transformers, <laughs> Hollywood explosions. That's what I love about America. Do you think that's a, un a uniquely American? I mean, anybody can ape any style, I suppose, but that's that's that America. Is, I think that's the most American of all cinema. I mean, everyone else seems the British do it. You know, they're more historical. I feel like you know the Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Southeast Asian. Kind of, they do it more human, human elements, mm -hmm. and the Americans more just about pack and explosives <laughs> and you know swear words and hot babes and just you know, <laughs> in one American package basically. See, when you say that, I just and then shooting it out a shotgun. Feel a pride that I wish I could yeah, feel. Even, even all Joe the time. Biden wants you to buy a shotgun. Uh... Buy a shotgun. By shotgun. It's what so beautiful, like? though. Independence Day is a good movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it is. It's like but... the ultimate American film. You have what is it? Will Smith beating up aliens with Randy Quaid and uh, Jeff Goldblum. Um, and then I think that movie has one of the best speeches ever, oh, like yeah. ever, from uh, Bill Pullman That's as president. Right. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. If that doesn't make you love America, nothing will. <laughs> I, I stand by that statement. If you don't love like America need, right now, you should watch it. We need oh, an oh invasion to bring us together. I think that's what America's missing. I do think that in every single alien movie I've ever seen, people are too calm. I think that in real life, people would just, you, it would be bad. So I don't, I don't think, myself included. Um, oh, but Independence Day was directed by a... Roland Emmerich. Is he German or like Austrian or? Well, he's not American. That's, uh, that's one thing I'm sure of. We can pretend Michael Bay directed it. He's from the American school of filmmaking, is he? I mean, clearly, I'm pretty jazzed for those sequels too. That actually is almost an Independence Day tradition. Is that will be airing 
on TBS or um it's the Christmas story or, yeah <laughs> and if it's just all, like how am I going to not start watching it when I see it on the listings how am I going to get away <laughs> <sighs> that that might be the best thing Americans ever America has ever done. But a, and an immigrant it. made it. And it's isn't that, that just that's so, so beautiful. He also oh. made the Patriot too, or the the uh, the Mel Gibson. That's right, yeah. Another that's right. super American in that ass. Oh, I hate that movie though. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, with the I mean, because it's like if you're gonna be historical, don't be so god awful. I, I demand my history to be boring and accurate. Oh, um, I don't mind it. I don't mind it not being accurate a little to see like a cannonball take it off from the guy's head. <laughs> that did happen. I remember that. Yeah. Um. So Independence Day, we've all come together on that. It's beautiful. What else is there? David? The hot dog eating contest oh. tomorrow. Sorry, I just want to talk about Joey Chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the hot dog eating contest by all means. Tell well, uh, it's awesome, and I actually feel rage whenever I hear someone bash or see someone bashing it online. Like, oh, this is disgusting. It's gluttony, and this is such a bad example of America, and people should be ashamed. And I'm like, no, no, this is everything I'm about. I actually, although I can't watch it, um, I, I've listened to it the last two years, um, just because... Well, like a well, color commentary, like play-by-play? I'll by just, play. like, cover my eyes while it's, like, on ESPN, because I start gagging at how <laughs> disgusting... I mean, it's water and hot dogs, um, so my favorite And American you still watch thing, it? Yeah, my favorite American thing is something that I can't even watch, really, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's great, and Joey Chestnut is going to win his eighth title tomorrow. Um, I think his record was like 69 hot dogs um, uh, last year. So an American going to win? Not some like jacked up Japanese guy? Okay? No, because Kobayashi... Yeah. 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 It's always he some was, tiny guy. Uh, he was, what is it, banned I think. Yeah, he he was, tried to yeah. crash the last one. For <laughs> the, yeah. He tried to crash it? Yeah, because he was banned from it because he puked and he didn't win or something. It's really weird. So this is, I mean, this is the dream, is the, is the yeah. surplus, the hot dogs enough for eating contests, you know? Like, that's what the liberals don't want. They don't want us to have hot dog eating contests. And the conservatives only want white men to have hot dog eating contests. I don't know. I don't know where this is going. But this is a beautiful vision, Michelle. I think it's one of the most American things in the world, just to... You know, stuff your face. No, you know, hunger is not involved. We've moved way past hunger. Mm -hmm. We're at a point where we can just, you know, total eat food competitively and make it into like this big, awesome sport. And mm -hmm. I think that's what America is about: competition in literally everything. <laughs> yeah, it's I like, don't agree with that. No. Fourth of, Fourth of July for me is like if if I could use one word, it'd be excess. So that's mm -hmm. what I love about America is like total excess. Like one thing I hate hearing all the time is, well, you know, like why do you need that? Like why do you need an SUV or why do you need, you know, 15 bullets in a chamber? Like mm -hmm. I, I don't need it. I want it. And <laughs> yeah. it's enough, you know, it's like who, it's, it's, the, it's not a bill of needs. You know, it's not like rationed rights. And, yeah, yeah. Like these liberals who want to like who want like government vouchers for speech and things. It's 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 just absolute ridiculousness. And so yeah, hot dogs. You know, go burn a bunch of gasoline for no reason. <laughs> slow. <laughs> you know, chop down a redwood. I don't know. Do whatever. <laughs> Maybe don't do that though. Yeah. Because so, they're, they're nice. <laughs> I mean, they're nice. You don't have to chop them down. You can tell a liberal you did that to make them cry. That's okay. Yeah. But don't actually do it, because they're nice treats. <laughs> yeah. I think right. that's an okay compromise. And no one's forcing Joey Chestnut or any of these competitors <laughs> to enter this contest. I mean, and it's not fun. I think um, I read somewhere <laughs> online, like, a breakdown <laughs> of what it's... I think Joey Chestnut, like, wrote it himself, of what it's like to go through each minute during the contest, and it sounds horrifying. It's like, like climbing Everest. Was, I mean, yeah. that's sports. That is sports. It's shutting, his body's, like, shutting down from all the hot dogs and, like, <laughs> nonsense. Um, yeah. But he does it, and it's awesome. He's choosing <laughs> to stuff his face. Byproducts, I know. Yeah. Uh, 
That's rough. Um, I guess, what do I love about America, besides the things I already said? Well, I mean, musically, we are kicking ass. Um, you know, Britain has some good stuff. I'm wearing, I found this shirt today. I'm so bored with the USA. It seemed appropriate enough, um, and it's a reference to a Clash song, and I made it like a decade ago. So British people have good music, but we have the most kick-ass, again, most melting pot-ish music around. We have, um, I love my punk music. I have my Jello Biafra mosh pit induced bruise right here. I'm very proud of it. And, you know, we have all that delightful country music and old-time music, all the shit that comes, like, Appalachian stuff that comes from these particular, or, you know, Delta Blues, things that come from chunks geographical sections of America. Like, 19th century murder ballads make me feel patriotic <laughs> in, in, in an inexplicable fashion. Um, there is something about America that I really do like at the end of the day. As, as much as the cool, angry kids try to make me, um, you know, say, fuck America 24-7, I don't quite have the heart for that. Or I have the heart for not that. You know what I mean? Well, I always ask, like, people who say fuck America, I always ask, like, where, really, where else is better? Like, well, there's that. Would you rather, like, where else would you rather live? Like, sure, in, you know, in Sweden, you might get your, you know, health care, but what are you going to do, really? Like, it sucks. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Sweden might be fine. An eighth of me is from there. They but, yeah. But I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's like, just, I don't know, culturally speaking, and just, I don't know. Like, my favorite anecdote is, like, when everybody was switching to, like, the metric system, and even, like, Canada, like, waited out for, like, we're going to wait for America to do it. And then yeah. <laughs> they switched. Because it's like, yeah, it's like, we just do things differently. Like, sure, the metric system is. Makes more sense. Way more better. Sense. <laughs> Hella dumb. It's, it's <laughs> and it's like I'll keep my indecipherable, you know, inches to feet to yards. You know, I still have no idea how many ounces are in a gallon, but that's well, I mean, that's <laughs> that's the America that I want yeah. to be completely exactly. like. I want the only criticisms of America to be the douchey liberal in the Daily Beast going. All these speech laws in Europe are so enlightened. America's just falling so far behind, and we allow all this hate speech. All I want is to be able to make fun of liberals like that all day, because all they have to say is America needs to be like Europe in these in these you know god awful collectivist ways. I yep. want the imaginary America where we're awesome and individualistic, and we don't bomb everywhere all the time, and we don't have all the shit that we actually do have. I want yeah. my imaginary America that was promised. And yeah, yeah. If you turn off your computer, you'll probably find that America in about five minutes. Well, there are you pieces just, of it. It's true. I mean, I feel like the internet basically forces Washington and all these opinions kind of down our throats. And I mean, you, you think people in like Wyoming really care about any of this? No, I, I, it's someone who's from that general part of the country. I can guarantee nobody gets it. <laughs> He's from northern Idaho. He's basically yeah, from yeah. It's like everybody here pretty much thinks of the racism. Organize a militia at you know the drop of a hat, which I wish was the case. But <laughs> yeah, I mean it's true. Like there is there there there. It's not this amalgamation, and that what's that's what comes of pretending that uh, America is made up of you know the people on Twitter. Well, no, a, a quarter of <laughs> California, New York City, and D.C. Uh, more like right. I mean, the flyover countries slur both from, you know, liberals and about... They really do, like, the, people do ignore most of the country most of the time in, in the, the media sense and the political sense. It's very strange. It's just... But it's better than if they were, I suppose, if they were paying attention to it all the time. Yeah. It never seemed like, like, for me, like, since I moved here... It seems like that kind of left liberal kind of point of view, even though it tries to like per, like present itself as being some kind of like universal thing, it's actually like really provincial. Mm -hmm. Not like they are really out of step. Like not, I mean, obviously not everything they say I disagree with, uh, like in terms of like social issues and things like that. But they're not as 
universal as they like to think. Like, well, there is a, a provincial is exactly the word for a certain type of liberal mm-hmm. who just it's new you know New York or die or uh, San Francisco or die and nowhere else. The people who like there are cliched Midwesterners and cliched Deep South yeah. people in the world totally, but this assumption that they're all you know, your Sarah Palin nightmares. Like, there are people in the world who really do seem to think that. Yeah. And most of the people in New York are great, except the op-ed writers, pretty much. <laughs> except Thomas Friedman. And David. Yeah, exactly. Like, David, David Brooks and Paul Krugman and, like, Gail Collins just need to, like, form their own, their own little club and wear signs so people know not to hang out with them. Yeah, something like that. But at the end of the day, though, I mean, there are people who do take some of our tax dollars and use it to buy missiles, and they use those missiles. And buy that's... Michael Bay movies, which is where they should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree, yeah. Just yeah tax for Michael Bay movies. Like Michael Bay. I'd allow that, I think, yeah. Well, America. I feel like we've come to some good conclusions about America this evening. Um... So I guess we. Didn't, what are you guys actually doing on the Fourth of July? What's What's the plan? I'm going. Wait, is it tomorrow? It yeah. Is. I was sort of. Well, yeah. We can, just, we can admit that that's actually tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. It's today. Totally. Hopefully, eating grilled meat. Grilled meat. Fair enough. Same thing I do every weekend, pretty much. All right. Good. David, you're in uh, Mordor. Do you have any yeah, Mordor exactly. plans? Um, I'm just going to probably meet up with a friend like, after he gets done sailing, which is like a common excuse I hear for East Coasters. Like, at, <laughs> at, 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 <laughs> Dude, what? Like, sailing. Like, I don't know. I just think that. And, and, yachting. You know, everybody out here is like really into brunch. Like, <laughs> oh, they real I know they are, David. I know. They never I shut know. the hell up about brunch. They never do. They never do. They like, love brunch. It, and they plan them out like weeks in advance. Like I'm just like, oh, I'm on a trip here, like on you know the 31st, and that's like three weeks away. It's like, oh, is that Sunday? Yes, I'm doing brunch. It's, you know. Oh my God, you're so right. I wish yeah. I was there to complain about brunch with you a little bit, but also <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I'm not. If you follow. Um, me. So yeah, and then just uh, drinking and uh, not giving up the fucks. <laughs> Sounds good. You know, my most um, my most ridiculous Fourth of July is probably the one I spent my first summer in D.C. when I went to see go see Adam Kokesh not get arrested for once <laughs> at the <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. That was the event. Watch Adam Kokesh not get arrested. He, he and a few other people were doing some uh, Thomas Jefferson memorial dance partying, but not one of the ones that had actual arrests, just uh, police lurking. But I like I put on I put on my Pittsburgh normal shirt in black, and I went to go scope it out, and then I like had to reassure him I wasn't some sort of undercover cop because I was like a strange person like shyly lurking, all dressed in black. Um, but you it was a pretty. Everybody's an undercover cop at this point. And that's fair, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 But that was my most ridiculously anti Fourth of July. Fourth of July. Most of the time, I just find Independence Day play on TBS and start watching it. I do. It's a solid plan. Really. I think so. General issue. Michelle, what are your uh, official plans? Just uh, binging on Roland Emmerich films, all of them. <laughs> just. Oh, America. I'll watch Stargate like 17 times and then move on. I keep falling uh, asleep during that movie, but I don't think it's Roland Emmerich's fault. It might be my uh, fault. It's it's the movie's fault, and this is coming from a huge <laughs> Stargate fan. Yeah, I mean, I love James Spader, and it's just the... Oh, uh, it might be James Spader's fault at the end of the day, because he's kind yeah. of unsettling. He's the only character I liked in Lincoln, by the way. His, his character was the only one who worth watching. <laughs> oh man, we could have talked about Bad Presidents, which is all of them. You know what? Before before we go, I, I'm switching up here. You Who was your that. worst president? Let's do it. will be our ending survey um, query. Wilson. Yeah, I was going to say Wilson. <sighs> Easy. I Joe. know. Uh, Joe, you know. I'm going to go off the grid and say <laughs> FDR. Thank you. I think <laughs> that sometimes they're really neck and neck. Um, you can make good arguments for both. 
or bad arguments or arguments for badness of both. FDR I knew about and despised earlier, um, and his reputation is still so much higher that I think it's tempting to pick him, you know, because people don't, even liberals don't really love Wilson the way that they still love FDR. Yeah. Or, or, or Teddy. Teddy's a close second for me just because he's a sick fucking racist and murderer. Andrew he loved Jackson war so Andrew much. Andrew Jackson doesn't get the hate he deserves. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. I'd burn 20s, but... You know, they're 20, so... Yeah. Jackson... You know, there's so many bad ones. Like, TR actually, like, his life's mission was to, like, kill a man with his bare hands. <laughs> like, he probably he, did that as a child. Yeah. But no, he was a weak, sickly child. That's why he became such a douche later. His <laughs> own daughter his own daughter said that his, that he wanted to be the, the bride at every wedding and the corpse at every funeral. He was such a dark kid. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, no wonder he's remembered so fondly. Well, thank God for President Bill Pullman, though. Thank <laughs> oh my saved God, saved us all. We're good. Yeah. I was wondering once if they would ever have really let him. Like, could they have stopped him from participating in the final battle? You know, because like, isn't it their job to protect him from flying fighter jets as the yeah. president? But oh, they needed him. They did. They needed him. Speaking of that, that should remind me of there's there's a hilarious SNL skit where it like it came out like right when that movie came out and it's like it's like a presidential debate because it came out like during the ninety six election and it's and it's uh Bill Bill Pullman's president character debating um Norm Macdonald playing Bob Dole. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I can't believe I've never the, seen that. It's the most hilarious thing ever and he's like, you know, uh or Bob Dole's like, yeah, oh, the president's a man of great words. Funny, you know, funny words and all those things are down. But like I said before, <laughs> most people are dead. <laughs> I mean, just what would happen when those ships came down and like, the, oh, it would have been real bad. And and yeah. also, thank God I, we have a strong president to see us through. Yeah, Thomas yeah. Whitmore. Communicate, communicate yeah. With Frank, because yeah, they might be talking about us behind our back. We want to communicate, right? But like fucking Obama, man. If aliens came, he'd just be he just he wouldn't have the bow. He bowed. To That's him. right. He would. Although I feel like Biden would be up there flying around with the blue <laughs> angels, probably. I'll give him that. Biden would be like Randy Quaid's character. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Harry Connick Jr. He, but probably, like... he probably has been attacked by aliens, so yeah. he probably is waiting for them to come back. Yeah. Also, my other favorite part in that movie is at the end when Randy Quaid tells them that he, like, is waiting to gain, get revenge on the aliens. And Adam Baldwin and the other guy are like, oh, abducted by aliens? Look at this fucking crazy guy. And they're about to go fight aliens. And they still don't believe him. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. This fucking guy with the alien abduction stories. Let's go fight the aliens, guys. <laughs> I think I think Nancy Pelosi would be the alien that Will Smith punches. Yes. No. Uh, as long as you pick an, a man, I will. My feminism will allow that as well. As long as. All right. you, you know, or well, it could just easily be John Bader as well. Yeah. Fair. There you go. Um, with these heartening words, it really it all comes down to Independence Day. I'm glad that we yeah. can come together on this. I feel I feel right about this. I think. I better wrap this damn thing up, though, as much as I literally would like to talk about Independence Day all day long. Um, I mean, okay. I was going to have people who would want to promote their works. Go read. What's your blog, David? Tell the people. Forgottenbeard.wordpress.com. I put it on my blog roll. Fine. I got you on my blog roll, too. Well, good. Um, and Michelle and Joe, just keep on keeping on. Oh, I'll enjoying. rep. I'll actually rep my former employer, the Foundation for Economic Education. They they have um this program called Big Ideas Live, and it's uh, an online education thing. It's like a conversation webinar. And on Tuesday, July eighth, they're having a program called What Does It Cost to Keep Them Out, and it's all about immigration. And I think it'd be a really good thing to watch. So yeah, Big Ideas Live Facebook page or follow the Foundation for Economic Education on Facebook and check it out. Sounds awesome. Thank you, uh, Joe. Do you have any? Do you want to? Do you want to say we should yeah, watch actually, other Michael Bay uh, movies? There'll be big things? changes in the stack log coming up soon that you don't know about, but 
that I have to do. So <laughs> well, I don't even know about them. New designs and new features that are coming soon. All, All right. comic sans. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, also, in other Stike World news, isn't Uncle John going to be on the Daily Caller now with his uh, columns? At least this Sunday, his okay. column will be in the I Daily think Caller. The Daily Caller is going to publish our Uncle John's columns now, so that's good. We like him. Um, and forever and always, you can go read my things in Anti War and Rare and Vice and the Stag Blog and hopefully someday somewhere else, but I don't really have the time management skills for that. I think we got to wrap this up. God knows how long it took, but Independence Day, the movie, uh, not so much the day, deserves that. Um, thank you, David and Michelle and Joe. Um, <laughs> not, thank you to Google for being too confusing for uh, two of my supposed guests today. We and, beat the um, British. We, we did. We were going to have a British guy, and we beat him because he failed but at Google Hangouts. Well. Yeah. I, f I feel even more patriotic than I did before. No All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, David. Was that a final word? Yeah, exactly. That'll be my uh, new. That'll be my new blog. No shots fired. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We're wrapping this up. Quiet. All of you. I have a flag. This is the only flag I have in the whole house. <laughs> it's for gay people. Also, never forget, dead Yankees don't lie. I have nothing with an actual American flag on it in my entire house. I almost wore a Croatia shirt because it, that's also red, white, and blue. Well, happy 4th of July to all the libertarians and their ilk out there. Don't tread on any of us. Thank you, Michelle. Um, this is a rambling politics for people who hate politics. Go out there and watch Independence Day. It'll be on TVS. You'll love it. Don't think too hard. All right. See you guys later.